welcome to another edition of Taking Stock, the show where we take stock of the week gone by and prepare you for the next trading week. I'm Sonia Shanoi and with me is Anut Singhal and what a week it has been for the market. So we had a big meltdown, we had a good recovery on Friday and at the end of it you just get, get left feeling a bit confused, a bit lost. That's how the bulls would have felt because there was punch after punch Anuj but by the end of the week there was a little bit of respite. Yeah, I think the way you look at the week is that Friday gave a lot of hope to the bulls. Uh, on Thursday, there was despair because the market had a gap up and then that was sold into. On Friday, that didn't happen. We had a gap up and the market closed at the high point of the day. So, yeah, normally, you know, if you go by the historical charting patterns, if you have a gap up in a downtrending market and you sustain that gap, that changes the near-term trend of the market. A lot depends on global market, of course. Uh, you know, we could all be having, you know, X on our faces Monday morning yeah. if Dow is down, uh, you know, uh, if, uh, you know, uh, Monday morning, say Nikkei falls so yeah. 2 or 3 percent. That could happen. But, you know, short of that, you'll have to believe that the market has put a near-term bottom in place. And what's good is that the market has got a bit of a leadership from the bank nifty. Mm. Uh, over the last two days, the bank nifty has added 800 points. And in fact, it was only bank nifty as a major index that closed in the green. Mm. Otherwise, the market closed in the red for the week despite the Friday rally. So, mm. that's good point. But keep one eye on the global screen. You can safely say that uh, till expiry maybe you have a near term bottom in place somewhere around 70 to 40. Okay, well the bulls would uh, definitely hope so. But let's find out more. Joining us on the show today we have Ajay Argal of Bearings Asset Management and Anu Jain of IFL Wealth Management. So let's kick start the show with Ajay. Ajay, welcome to Taking Stock. Uh, what are you advising investors to do after this roller coaster ride? Should one uh, take a breather and sit on some cash or should you start deploying money into this market now? We definitely feel that it's the time to start investing in the Indian markets. Uh, the reason being that uh, the Indian markets uh, are still one of the markets where you would have growth. And uh, uh, even uh, since last year, we have been maintaining that uh, the market has become very stock specific. So even now, uh, there are opportunities in a set of stocks where uh, there would be uh, decent growth. And when I say decent growth, it could be upwards of 15 to 20 percent. And some of them out of that are available at reasonable valuations. So definitely, uh, we should start looking to invest in those kind of stocks. Uh, we were positive uh, even last year. So from that, uh, because of the global uh, conditions, uh, there has been correction. So it's a better entry point from that perspective. But don't you think we might get better levels in the months to come, Ajay? On one account, you know, we have weakness in earnings. On the other, there's still no, uh, you know, recovery seen in global markets. We can never catch the bottom. Uh, so we have to look at uh, uh, whether the uh, investment level at this particular moment is attractive enough. And for that, it depends on the investment horizon. If your investment horizon is a few months, then of course, what you're saying uh, could be true. But what we do is we are typically looking at uh, stocks uh, from three to five year perspective and we find that uh, from that perspective uh, this is a much better opportunity uh, compared to what it was a few months back. Whether it can be even better down the road, uh, only time will tell. Very difficult for anyone to figure out when the bottom is going to happen. Uh, we, can, uh, we can point that out only in hindsight. So for that uh, we might have to wait much longer. And uh, if we wait, then there is a risk that we might have to buy even higher. Hi Ajay, what is the expectation from the budget then and how high is the possibility of a sell-off post-budget only because how weak the sentiment is? So I don't think that there is any expectation of the budget, uh, I mean any significant expectation uh, that is to say. Uh, there are some expectations of uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, reduction in uh, tax rates because uh, there has been some reports in the media. But I wouldn't say that it's uh, very much, uh, especially after the correction which we have witnessed uh, in this calendar year, I think whatever froth and whatever expectations was there, even in terms of the budget, is uh, kind of totally gone. And again, uh, from our uh, portfolio uh, construction perspective, we don't look at budget uh, as an event. We have stopped looking at it uh, a long time back uh, because uh, even if uh, there are uh, some positive developments in the budget, it takes time. Uh, for it to percolate down to the broad economy and even within that uh, you have to be really focused on the stocks. So we always uh, try to uh, figure out uh, where the uh, individual stocks where we are positive are headed in terms of their business growth and whether the valuations are reasonable enough for us to uh, maintain our positions there. And we continue to have that uh, game plan rather than uh, trying to predict what would come in the budget. 
Okay, and since you mentioned that this is a good time to be deploying money into markets, what are the sectors that you are bullish on? So, uh, uh, in, in, in the sectors, uh, and again I repeat that uh, even within the sectors, we are uh, very focused on individual stocks. So, certain stocks uh, in the private sector financials uh, we are positive on. Uh, we are positive on uh, certain consumer discretionary stocks uh, in the media sector, in the uh, automobile sector, in the auto ancillaries. Uh, then we are uh, also positive on a few uh, select stocks in the home improvement uh, category. So it's a, it's a sprinkling of uh, individual stocks uh, rather than any uh, sectoral uh, broad brush or even uh, thematic from that perspective. What about private banks which have uh, a corporate exposure, names like Axis Bank that did well this week. Do you think the worst of the asset quality pain is over? Yeah, so we uh, obviously uh, try to balance uh, within the portfolio. So obviously we are uh, having a much larger weightage in the retail lenders but at the same time uh, we, can, we don't ignore the corporate lenders and especially some of the better ones uh, including the name you just mentioned. Uh, and the reason I say this is uh, uh, it also has to be balanced with the kind of valuations which the markets are throwing at us. So the markets have already kind of uh, discounted a very pessimistic scenario in our opinion in some of the uh, uh, private sector uh, uh, corporate lenders but at the same time uh, we also feel that in some of the uh, corporate uh, sector lenders uh, the valuations are kind of uh, justified and uh, so we don't need to uh, get into them uh, just yet and in fact uh, over the last few months we have even reduced uh, uh, the single uh, bank which we had in the public sector category because we are seeing that uh, uh, the uh, non-performing loans is uh, becoming a bigger issue uh, especially in light of the correction which we are seeing in the uh, commodities uh, globally and uh, some of these uh, corporates are heavily indebted in these uh, sectors and obviously they have uh, uh, a much more larger borrowing from the public sector banks. So we have actually reduced uh, from the public sector side but at the same time uh, some of the private sector corporate lenders we are uh, relatively more positive because uh, to compensate uh, for these asset quality issues some of them are having very reasonable growth and uh, e even uh, those corporate sector lenders have uh, let's say 30 or 40 percent coming from the retail book which is anyway growing and uh, so far the asset quality in the retail book is uh, pretty, uh, uh, pretty reasonable. So we are kind of balancing in the portfolio and in that sense we are doing a barbell approach because we cannot be uh, totally uh, hiding into good quality because then uh, the, the valuations are obviously a bit on the higher side and the return expectations uh, especially in the short term could be lower whereas uh, it's the other way around in some of these uh, private sector corporate lenders. Would you have a view on the aviation sector Ajay? I mean Indigo was the big talking point on Friday after a 20% fall. How would you view that name? Well, we have taken a long term call that uh, at least at the moment we don't want to be in this sector uh, because uh, the earnings are at the peak uh, and uh, at least the expectations are also at the peak with the kind of crude oil prices we are witnessing. So uh, we are kind of uh, staying away from the sector. Okay, let's talk about some more large caps then. We have seen decent earnings from you know names like Reliance, Infosys, Asian Paints, Z Entertainment. Would you be buying any of these names right now? Yeah, so some of these stocks which you have mentioned uh, are actually uh, some of our large holdings and they, were la they have been large holdings uh, especially since the last one year. Uh, so it uh, depends on what kind of expectations are there. So in some of the stocks which you mentioned there uh, just now, the expectations are even now uh, not very high. And we believe that uh, the earnings which could be delivered over the next few quarters uh, could be uh, sufficient uh, to take uh, these stocks uh, even higher. Whereas uh, one of those stocks which you mentioned just now, uh, we feel that the valuations are not uh, supportive. So we, uh, we, we are not venturing into that. So again, it's very stock specific. Uh, even when the stocks have done well, uh, we don't kind of uh, uh, feel that it's done enough uh, because we are looking uh, at at least the next three years, if not longer. And if we feel that over the next three years, the growth is uh, not properly discounted in the current stock prices, uh, we would like to maintain our positions. Okay, Ajay, before we end the show, and this is a question that we've been asking all our experts, how high is the probability of a bear market in equities? Yeah, so we feel that uh, the bear phase in equities uh, is uh, not very likely. Uh, 
uh, especially in India, uh, because uh, India, first of all, we have seen that over the last few years, one big positive which has happened is the macro situation is pretty good. So, which means that the currency should be broadly stable. I mean, we have seen the currency depreciating off late, but that is in line with uh, uh, even uh, some of the m much more stable currencies and especially currencies with uh, current account surpluses as well. So, that's a global uh, strengthening of the dollar rather than the weakening of the currency. So, that is the one big positive that the macro, uh, macro numbers of India has been as strong uh, as they have been in the last at least one or two decades. So, that's a good starting point. And then uh, a lot of uh, fraud which was there for the last one, one and a half years is kind of uh, dissipated. Uh, but there is still uh, much higher valuations in uh, some of the smaller names. So, if you look at uh, the larger uh, stocks and some of the stocks like which you mentioned which came up with uh, good results uh, this quarter, some of those larger stocks are uh, tra trading at very reasonable valuations. So, uh, normally we have seen in the past that when stocks trade at reasonable valuations, especially the large cap ones. and uh, uh, even if there is a global correction, then quickly you will find that buyers are willing to come in because you are seeing a good growth versus valuation combination. So, we feel that uh, yes, there could be correction in line with the global markets, but India should be relatively better off. <laughs> well, on that optimistic note, we'll thank you, Ajay. Uh, we'll also slip into a break and hear out some market opinion that we heard through the course of the week. I think India may still go down to around 20,000, that's possible, that's another 20%. And I think that eventually the market will go higher in India, but it will obviously depend on monetary policies. I prefer India to have a relatively tight monetary policies as they are practiced under Mr. Rajan, who I think is the best central banker in the world, because if you keep money relatively tight, the currency is relative strong. This has happened in India. This is the best for India to have a relative strong currency. The stock market is not important for the average Indian. The markets uh, are um, uh, oversold and over the next few days they should uh, uh, should start to stabilize and, 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 uh, and hopefully recover moderately from here. The large cap selling has been more uh, subdued. I think what has really caught uh, uh, my attention is the uh, level of selling in the mid and small caps. Last 20 days have been very challenging with almost uh, 9 to 10 percent downtick on the <coughs> And on the indices and maybe 25-30% cut on various uh, individual stocks. In the short term, there will be a lot of collateral damages because of the sharp oil correction. And each and every corporate earnings estimates, etc. will have to be re-evaluated in terms of whether they are impacted in terms of inventory or loss of demand, etc. So, we are, what we are telling our investor clients is that it is the time to invest, but the return expectations should be tempered. Until November, the average run rate per month was about six to 7,000 crores of inflows into equity mutual funds. Uh, December was slightly muted. It was around 3,500, 4,000 crores. Uh, similar trend is, uh, is being witnessed even in January. So I don't think it has turned negative at all, uh, just that it has got tapered a little bit. You are now reaching levels uh, which were quite attractive uh, from a market perspective, right? And you can never time the market uh, for an absolute bottom. But those were levels that uh, certainly, you know, long-term investors would have ventured out and, and, and started to buy. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, you've seen 11, 12 days of uh, downside in the market. So you will even if the market is to bottom out, it is probably going to take a while.